All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel and today we have some pretty massive updates in the whole Russia-Ukraine situation that we've been covering here on the channel. I think at this point I've done two videos talking about it, but there's enough updates to actually come back because this one is actually a pretty massive update. Unfortunately, uh, there is news that, well, pretty much Ukraine is being invaded by Russia at any moment now. There's been a lot that's gone on over the last 24 hours especially that indicates that pretty much Ukraine could be overrun by Russian forces at pretty much any second. And according to the EU Foreign Affairs Chief Joseph Burrell, there's actually already Russian troops now entering Ukrainian territory. So everything is kind of finally happening, right? It's all falling into place. All of the stories that we've heard over the last few weeks are finally starting to kind of come true. It looks like the full-blown Russian invasion of Ukraine could happen at any moment now, as it appears that it's already started. So to start everything off here, first and foremost, I want to talk about a situation that more or less started in Russia, because, well, just yesterday, President Vladimir Putin had signed a decree that basically recognized the independence of two regions in eastern Ukraine's Donbas area. Now these areas are called Donetsk and Luhansk, I think is the best way I can pronounce them. They're actually two areas of Ukraine that are currently controlled by what are called separatists, aka these people believe that they're their own, you know, sovereign state, right? They don't want to be part of Ukraine, they kind of just want to be like an independent country or an independent state in some way. And by recognizing both of these regions as their own independent areas, Russia has not only violated international law, but they've indicated that they do not care about the sovereignty of Ukraine once again and that they're willing to meddle in any sort of affairs with the country. This actually led to a round of sanctions from the West to begin with. As you guys have probably heard over the last few weeks, one of the massive arsenals that the West has that they'll be using to basically respond to the Russian invasion of Ukraine with is sanctions, okay? They're basically going to hit them where it hurts the most, which is in their wallet. Obviously, a pretty good amount, if not the vast majority of the global economy, runs through the Western nations nations like the United Kingdom, France, Germany, United States, Canada, things like that, right? Well, these countries have all announced that they will be using sanctions to fight back against the Russians, which could actually end up crippling the Russian economy if done properly, considering that these countries have some of the most influential economies in the world at this point. The United States is pretty much still like the dominant force on the planet in a lot of ways. But of course, now further sanctions are supposed to be announced today by US and EU leaders because something massive actually happened just today. Day, which is only one day after they basically recognized the independence of these two areas. According to state media in Russia, the parliament in Russia has actually approved the use of armed forces abroad, aka the government of Russia has reportedly signed off on the use of military force in other areas of the world, which obviously means only one thing. They're basically authorizing use of force in Ukraine. Of course, this perfectly aligns up with the reports that Russian troops have actually started to make their way into eastern Ukraine, which gives them their own quote-unquote justification for making this invasion in the first place. Chancellor Olaf Scholz actually announced on Tuesday that Germany would be halting the certification of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline that goes between Germany and Russia. This was actually a major economic development for Europe. It was a $10 billion project, and of course, uh, Germany, from my understanding, gets about half of its natural gas supply from the Russians. And considering that Germany is in the EU, is close allies with the United States and the United Kingdom, Kingdom, and on top of that as a part of NATO, it means that they were basically forced to act, right? They have to stand alongside their Western allies in this entire thing, even if half of their natural gas supply comes from the person that they're standing up against. By halting the certification of this pipeline, it could have rippling effects on both the German and the Russian economy. Uh, there's a lot of worries that Russia could outright just restrict all of the access to natural gas to Germany, and especially considering here in the Northern Hemisphere, it is winter for a few more months. That could have devastating consequences on the people who would be affected by it. Boris Johnson said that the United Kingdom would be imposing sanctions on five Russian banks and also three wealthy Russian individuals. And of course, the EU and the United States are expected to announce first further sanctions on Russia on Tuesday, as of me recording this video right now. Within the next few hours, President Joe Biden is expected to address the public considering uh, basically what the United States' next steps will be with all of the developing news that we're hearing out of Ukraine and Russia now. As of me recording this, it has not started. I'm not able to find any sort of live stream or anything of it, 
So uh, by the time that I get this video out, I assume it will have at least already started, if not completely wrapped up and concluded. So if you want to look for some news updates there, you can find those online, I would think. Now, one of the major reasons, apparently, that the Russian military is being mobilized and authorized in this way is for quote-unquote peacekeeping, okay? This is actually a decree uh, from Putin himself that claims that the order for the Russian military to do what they're doing in the separatist territories that they've now basically recognized is that they're conducting quote-unquote peacekeeping operations. Keep in mind, they're claiming that these are peacekeeping operations while they're quite literally invading another foreign country. They've been threatening the sovereignty of this country for years. They literally invaded them in 2000. 2014 and annexed a portion of their country called Crimea from them. They've been threatening to use warfare against them and their people for years, and they're now, of course, moving military forces into their country, right? So, while claiming that they're conducting peacekeeping operations, they're committing a legitimate invasion of a foreign country because they're afraid of the alliance that the countries past Ukraine are currently in. Keep in mind, the whole reason NATO really even exists is to, like, deter Russia. That was a massive part of the Cold War and why NATO was so effective, right? is because it was a massive military alliance against the Soviet Union. So Russia is kind of the reason that NATO really exists, or at least is funded to the extent that it is in the first place, and then they're claiming that, you know, oh, they're threatening us. Ukraine is a country with a military force like a sixth of the size of Russia. I'm not really sure how you could consider that too much of a quote-unquote threat like that. Everything that re really is going on, right, it more or less indicates that Russia has been, continues to be, and plans on in the future being the antagonist to this entire situation. On top of all of this, the European Union is now deploying a cyber rapid response team for the Ukraine situation. This includes six countries' cybersecurity experts because Ukraine unfortunately had to call for help in defense against Russian cyber attacks. Over the last week or so, there's been a lot of reports of at least two waves of major cyber attacks that have taken place against Ukrainian infrastructure, banks, and government. These are being used to not only kind of strike fear into the heart of Ukrainians, but also in order to kind of weaken and everything and kind of, you know, distract the Ukrainians, at least to a certain extent, while Russia makes the moves that it wants to make. Of course, it's also way easier to invade a country if you're, you know, committing cyber attacks that are fucking with their banks and, you know, their government infrastructure, things like that, right? Obviously, Russia's resources when it comes to cyber warfare are probably much farther along than someone like Ukraine. And in the last few years, we've seen the use of cyber warfare like this kind of increase. Here in the United States, though, there's been a massive bipartisan call for much harsher sanctions on on Russia due to the actions that they've been taking. Democrats and Republicans alike have been calling for massive sanctions against the country and for the United States to flex its muscles by basically economically harming Russia to a point of what's supposed to be deterrent, right? But obviously Russia has shown no interest in deterring any of their actions so far. Russia also claims that it will be evacuating the embassy staff from Ukraine for their own quote-unquote safety. Obviously it's a very suspicious move when you've amassed over 150,000 soldiers on the border of this country, committed cyber warfare against them, openly basically announced that you're going to be attacking slash invading them, moved troops into separatist controlled areas of their country, and claim that they're basically threatening you and your sovereignty and that you're going to have to deploy your military uh, through your parliament basically signing off on it. So it's definitely a very suspicious move and it's one that definitely will be kept a uh, pretty close watch on by the West and by countries involved in this entire situation. But the effects of Ukraine and Russia have been felt here in the United States too. If you're a stock owner, you probably know that. The stock market has been doing very well. As of me recording this, the NASDAQ is down over 1% due to the news of escalating tensions in the Russia and Ukraine situation. Over the last few days, trading's been pretty bad on the stock market because people are pretty fearful of what's about to unfold in Europe. Even though there's been multiple claims by, especially the United States, that there would not be any sort of direct involvement with military forces, people are worried that this could lead to the beginning of World War III. And there's even claims now that Russia may or may not have recognized areas and territory beyond the rebel regions of Ukraine and the two regions that we talked about earlier in this video, which would be a massive and flagrant, ridiculous violation of international law. Russia continues to pressure Ukraine into backing away from any sort of NATO partnership. If you have not known, uh, Ukraine has expressed interest in joining NATO for years now, Kind of wonder why, when Russia is literally invading them. And obviously Russia, they have a pretty big problem with NATO, as it's an alliance that they see as their enemy, and they don't want that right on their border. So, it's understandable that they don't want Ukraine to be part of NATO, but they're definitely being the aggressor in this situation. Ukraine, uh, at this point, it is definitely in their best interest to join NATO, because then if Russia attacks them, then it's just all-out World War III. Now, at this point, I don't think that Ukraine is going to be joining NATO. Uh, Ukraine seems to be willing to kind of take this stand alone to a certain 
certain extent. In fact, the Ukrainian president has said that they're actually mulling over cutting all diplomatic ties with Russia due to this situation. Not really hard to blame them if we're being honest. So people are still worried, will this lead to World War III? Are we going to see a draft here in the United States or something? And are we all getting shipped off to fight in the front lines of Ukraine? Well, President Biden and military officials have repeatedly suggested that that will not be the case. The United States will not be fighting this war for Ukraine. And although they have ours and the West's support in this entire situation, it will not be involving our soldiers anytime soon. Now, of course, the situation could change, right? I mean, if there's like proof or something that like Moscow is marching through the streets of Ukraine and just massacring American civilians, at that point, maybe you can kind of open up the textbook of are we going to be sending troops over there or not? At that point, I don't even know if we still would. Uh, but it really, I think, kind of depends on how far it goes. If uh, Russia decides to start invading beyond Ukraine and they invade some neighboring countries beyond that, then perhaps I could see the possibility of all out war breaking out. But that's simply because of like NATO membership and stuff, right? A lot of the countries surrounding Ukraine are pretty much just involved in NATO altogether. So invading them automatically pretty much invokes the part of the agreement of NATO that would bring the United States into some sort of conflict like this. But I really don't see that happening, at least anytime soon. I think Russia kind of knows what they're doing. You know, I feel like they know that they're the aggressor and that they do not really have the popular support of the world right now. So it would be pretty dumb for them to do that. The United States military, as much as people like to clown on the United States, it's a force to be reckoned with. Like, sure, they lost to the Taliban and they lose pretty historically to, like, military forces that don't really have, like, a strategy that are, like, you know, using guerrilla tactics and stuff. But when it comes to operations against legitimate forces, we've seen time and time again that the United States military is pretty much second to none. As of right now, if you're an American, or even if you're, like, I guess in the UK or something like that, I wouldn't be worried about you going to war tomorrow. You know, I wouldn't be worried about you getting drafted or anything crazy like that because, well, that's just not in the plan right now and of course situations change and whatnot but also you got to think about it like this why are you going to sit around and stress about it right i've seen so many people worried like even my personal friends keep asking me like dude do you think we're going to get drafted like are we going to war and i have to just keep telling them you know like i, I don't think that's going to happen i don't think that we're going to be shipped off anywhere and even if something like that were to unfold right even if all-out global warfare were to unfold why sit around and stress about whether or not you're going to get drafted you know because if you are going to get drafted you're going to get drafted regardless right like it's going to happen I'm not saying like, oh, you know, you can't feel some type of way about it, but to sit around and 24-7 put the stress through your mind because of these news stories, man, it's really not good for you, you know, because, I mean, at the end of the day, if something crazy is going to happen, it's going to happen whether or not you influence it or not. So just relax and enjoy life, man. Uh, but this is a very serious situation still, right? Like, we do have people in Ukraine who are going to be facing the war machine of Russia. For them, it's a completely different situation than it would be for, like, me. I'm probably not going to war tomorrow because I live in the United States, but if you're in Ukraine right now, there's been videos of civilians riding, like, the public bus with, like, AK-47s just in case the Russians decide to invade. That way they can fight and die in the streets for their country. And honestly, the rally of support that I've seen from the Ukrainian people is pretty goddamn inspiring. I mean, these people are very serious about their sovereignty. They are not going to bow down to Russia. I saw a picture on Twitter of like an 80 year old grandmother who had like a cardboard cut out of a gun and she was like training herself and her children with other people in the neighborhood on how to use weapons in case they had to take to the streets to fight the Russians themselves. And honestly, that's pretty goddamn badass. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's pretty fucking courageous and brave, man, because the Russian war machine, it's not something to take lightly. I mean, it's one of the biggest military forces on the planet. And Ukraine isn't a bunch of pushovers. They have a respectable military force too, but Russia just overpowers them in pretty much everything. So to see the people of Ukraine still be so determined in the face of such a mighty military opponent in such a serious situation, it's inspiring. And honestly, I'm fully in support of the people of Ukraine. I mean, they deserve to have a sovereign state. They deserve to have a sovereign nation. Uh, the Russian invasion is not justifiable. It's not not really anything that people I think can defend and these people don't deserve to have to go through something like this because Ru Russia's fucking scared of us you know what I'm saying so with that being said thank you guys for watching if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus make sure to check out shop Opti down below and until my next video guys this is Optimus well talking about the Ukraine crisis and signing out